Now we're going to explore what happens to our variables when we use functions. So let's say in main I've got my function called. Let me tell my function to do something so it's actually a little bit more interesting. So up here I've got my function called. If I make a variable inside main, let's say I make an integer called a and set it equal to 10, um, then I'm thinking, you know, like if I print this guy out, if I print this guy out, then I should see that value come out on the screen. So let's just verify that there is a 10 in it. So I print this guy, there's my 10, there's my call to my function hello. Okay, so I've got this variable, it's inside main. If I try to take this line and move it down inside my function, um, you'll notice right away that I got a red underline to indicate I've got a syntax error. If I hover over this A down here, um, I see, okay, A cannot be resolved to a variable. So it seems like if I make a variable inside main, that doesn't mean that it exists inside this function. Let's do a test the opposite way. So let me move this print up here and take this guy and move it down. And you'll see I've got the same problem. It says that A cannot be resolved to a variable. Okay, so the first rule about using functions is that variables that you declare inside of a function, they really exist only inside that function. In fact, that's true between any set of curlies. If you declare a variable inside some curlies, it only exists in between that in that block of code. Um, and that's called having local scope. So A only exists in main. And so if I try to use it down here in fun, I can't unless I provide a sort of a sharing pathway that I can send A's value down here. So all I have to do to make that happen is to create a parameter for this function. And so I go inside these parentheses and I specify what type that information will be. So here I want to share this integer, so it's going to be an int, and then I choose a name for my parameter. Now it can be the same name as the variable that you have, but it doesn't have to be, because this guy is just a placeholder, so I could call it B. And then when I'm down here, whoops, I just want to print lines so that I don't have to keep typing it. If I do this, then all I have to do is refer to it by the same name that I've placed inside this parentheses. And then when I call this function, I can hand it any integer, and it will send a copy of it down here to this function and print it out. So if I run this guy, I've got my 10 that comes from this print line. I send my value in through this function. It prints out the hello right here. And then I've got the print of the value that got passed in as a parameter, so I've got it right here. Okay, let's do some tests now. I want to show you some little stuff. So let's do this. I want to say this is a before function call. Okay, and plus a. Let me steal this line. All right, and this is a after the function call. Let me get rid of this guy. Okay, so there I've got my function call in between these two lines. I want to show um, this is b, b before changing it because I want to try a test here and let me get this and say b after changes. Instead of printing this guy, let's do some math on him. So let me take b and add 10 to it. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. All right, let me make my console a little bit taller so I can actually see all of this. So here I've got my A set to 10. I printed out A before the function call. And so that this this line, A before the function call is 10. That's what I would expect. Okay, now I've got my function call, which zips me down to here. And I've printed out B before the changes. So B before the changes is 10, which is what I would expect because it's just really a stand-in for A. Okay, I've done my math. I've printed out again, B after the changes is 20, and then when I go back up, it prints A after the function call is 10. Well, that's interesting. So even though I did some math in here and it stuck while it was inside the function, when I go back up to my main, those changes have not stayed. So A has reverted back to its original value. That's because when you pass a value as a parameter to a function in Java, it gets a copy. And when this function is finished, it tosses that copy right in the garbage. And so when you go back up, no real changes have been made to your actual variable. So that's important to keep in, uh, in mind. When you send a value down here, this guy will use it and then toss it in the trash. And any changes that you made, even if you spent 100 lines of code doing some intricate calculation, those will be tossed right in the trash. So remember that sending a, fun a, val a variable in as a parameter does not allow you to get it back out yet.